All right, well, good morning to you, Jean-Michel. Firstly, I'd, I'd like to welcome you for joining us today on this interview. And um, I, it's, a, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. And I'd just like to open up and, and ask you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your areas of expertise, what it is that you actually do and, and how you work with people utilizing LinkedIn? Well, certainly, uh, Derek, uh, first I want to thank you for the opportunity. Uh, very grateful. And uh, maybe morning for you, but it's afternoon for me. <laughs> we are on the other side of the world, right? I'm in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. You are in Australia. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's get in. Um, what do I do? So, you know, like many people, I've had to reinvent myself several times in my life and career, but let's talk about what I'm doing now first, right? So, um, you know, um, I do a couple of things very well. I help, uh, I help professional uh, in career transition, find jobs using the amazing power of LinkedIn. And I also uh, help older professionals in career transition find uh, build their own consulting business. Because as you know, there's a little pesky thing called age discrimination. As you get older and older, it's, it's harder and harder to get a full-time job with you know, a regular job with a company. And so uh, as I was working more and more with older professionals, I started uh, teaching them how to start their own company, you know, and helping them implement the technology and, and, their, and their LinkedIn sales funnels and marketing. Uh, and also work with a lot of small business owners uh, consultants, coaches, doing very much the same thing, helping them grow, build and grow their business. Uh, you know, I do a different kind of marketing, but I really specialize just like you in, in LinkedIn marketing for B2B. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And um, how long ago did you first get started on LinkedIn? Uh, you know, uh, probably a little bit like, uh, very much like uh, about everyone, you know, uh, I'd say about 10 years ago, I mean, you know, what do we think about it, Derek? I mean, both social media platforms are very young. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, LinkedIn started first, I think, in the, in, the, in the first half of 2003. You know, but the LinkedIn public profiles were not available until 2006. You know, meanwhile, Facebook started in 2004, uh, first release as a beta, beta testing platform uh, uh, on the Harvard, uh, you know, Harvard uh, school campus. And then I think uh, a couple of years later, 2006, perhaps, if my memory serves me well, uh, Twitter was was launched. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, at some uh, some new technology, new way for us to communicate in the world. But it's it's very young. You know, we're talking about 10, 14 years at most. You know, it's crazy. So we absolutely. We, I, I still think it's in its infancy. I really do. Even though it's been growing at about 20 percent uh, or almost 20 percent a year for the last couple of years since Microsoft took over, it's quite extraordinary. Um, or certainly 10 to 20% growth, which is uh, amazing in itself. But yeah, I think it's definitely in its infancy and it and it's just goes to show what we're achieving with it now, when you think about that and consider that, what we'll be able to achieve with it in years to come. So there's some amazing opportunities out there. Yeah, okay. Um, now, can you tell us, um, what was your experience with getting started on LinkedIn? How, how was it for you when you first actually got it started? And was it, did you find that easy? Was it a challenge? Did you experience any frustrations at all? Or how was it when you, you first got involved with LinkedIn back all those years ago? Well, I'll tell you, you know, probably like most of us, you know, I have no, I had no clue what I was doing on LinkedIn. You know, <laughs> I mean, when you look at, uh, uh, of course, it has evolved, you know, in the past the past few years mostly, uh, and it has a lot of moving parts, a lot of pieces, you know, a lot of intricacies. But you know, when I started a decade ago, you know, I was I was just like a regular job hunter. I was like, okay, you know, I gotta have a resume online, and that looks like LinkedIn, right? I start at the time. I had no appreciation for what an amazing uh, connecting engine was, you know. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I didn't do very well with it, you know, uh, I mean, uh, most people don't know that, but you know, I, I'm, uh, I come from engineering, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I used to be a, a nuclear physicist and aerospace engineer, 
So I, I designed power plant and, and spacecraft to send astronauts to Mars and Jupiter. You know? So right. that was me. I, I, I came from engineering. I was also a software developer uh, and, and using this, this talent for, for both uh, engineering. But also, uh, starting about maybe 25 years ago, I would say, you know, I was doing very much like what you were doing. I was developing websites. I was consulting on the side, even so I was a, a, a full-time uh, professor at the university, you know, teaching classes, doing, doing research, working on government contracts. But I was, uh, I was already freelancing on the side, you know, uh, developing websites, doing SEO marketing for CRM companies, developing online database, uh, you know, uh, ERP software. Yeah. So, um, so I started, I started educating myself on the web technology, you know, and the opportunity are amazing there. Yeah, you know, when, yeah, when absolutely. Well, that's a lot easier to, to do things nowadays than what it was all those years ago. Um, I mean, just a, especially websites and things like that and playing around with code as we did many years ago. Now it's, it's just drag and drop and it's much easier. So uh, just going back to LinkedIn, did you experience any frustrations or challenges with it when you first got started? Well, uh, you know, it was difficult, you yeah. know, uh, I was, I was in career transition. Uh, I wanted to do something different. Uh, you know, in my industry, uh, this is all government funding, right? And you know, government funding is very flaky when the military, uh, funding gets into there. Right. So, uh, so I want to do something else, uh, you know, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do at the time. You know, that, that's, I think we're all, we're all struggling with that. I was going through my midlife crisis, I guess, you know, trying to define myself. Is that okay? You know, what am I supposed to be doing here on this earth, right? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what am I supposed, what talents am I supposed to use and, and what to do? But, you know, what happened with me is I, I discovered at the university as a professor, I, dis I discovered my, my talent and my passion for mentoring and coaching others, you know, because I saw that, you know, when I was working with those young people and not so young people sometimes, you know, working with the national lab engineers and, 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 and mature adults, I could see what a tremendous difference it could make in their, in their career and their life. Mm -hmm. So uh, just like many people, I had to reinvent myself many times, you know, and then uh, it was several years ago, I was like, okay, what am I going to do? And uh, I looked at LinkedIn and I was like, okay, everybody that needs, everybody that is looking for a new job now, hopefully they understand, you know, they have to be on LinkedIn. It is really the, the, the only way to access the hidden job market, mm -hmm. which is 85% of the jobs which are not advertised online. Okay. So I looked at that and I says, okay, if I get on LinkedIn, I'm going to be a career coach. I will never run out of clients. Piece of cake, <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's how I got started on LinkedIn, and that's how I started developing my my career coaching business. You know? Yeah. But uh, but uh, needless to say, I struggled in the beginning. You know, I struggled in the beginning because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and uh, I was missing uh, essential ingredients. The first ingredient I was missing, you know, as you start as a freelancer or consultant, is uh, I was not branded well. I didn't know how to brand myself. And number three, I didn't have any, any authority because I was just starting working with clients. So I didn't have reviews. I didn't have testimonial. Yeah. So, you know, when you start, you struggle with that lack of authority. Lack of authority. How do you convey trust? Yeah. You know, how do you make people believe that, you know, yes, I can help you. Give me a chance, right? Yes. Uh, uh, so and that's one of the challenges I think all of us at some stage or other in our careers, especially when we're first starting out, are faced with is, is that social proof or that uh, industry authority or credibility. Exactly. And then there's that new component that you and I understand very well because we, we understand uh, SEO or search engine optimization very well. Yeah. You know, that, that understanding that with the right content, you know, with the right keywords, in the right places, and yes. and and LinkedIn, LinkedIn has its own uh, own uh, SEO technology. It's not exactly like like uh, like a website, mm. but 
once you understand how, how you learn how to brand yourself and you optimize your LinkedIn profile, you know, something magical happens. You're actually attracting the right people to your business. Yes. Because, you know, you, know, you realize millions of professionals are looking for help on LinkedIn every day. Yeah. So how do you funnel that traffic, right? So if you can, if, if you manage to funnel that free, free inbound traffic, great, because you don't really have to work at it, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's free. That's the nice thing, right? Yeah. But it takes a while to get there. It takes it a does. while, you know? It does. Um, and I think it, it also takes a while to figure out exactly what to do. Um, because unfortunately LinkedIn doesn't really have a, a helpline that you can ring up and, and you can say, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? Um, it'd be fantastic if they were, if they did have such a thing, hint, hint, LinkedIn. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Hello, anybody listening here? <laughs> but, um, purely with, with the numbers that they have, they, they'd probably need over a thousand people just to answer that one line, that one hotline alone. Um, but I think that's one of the challenging parts when you're first getting started is to try and figure out exactly what to do and, and how to use the platform itself. And, and you know, uh, probably like many, many other consultants and coaches, you know, when I started, uh, uh, I educated myself as much as I could. So, you know, I, I, uh, I uh, got on webinars, I purchased programs, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm guilty of spending tons of money on SOS. You, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Shiny object syndrome, right? <laughs> so, you know, everybody's promising, you know, Hey, here is my, you know, uh, hey, hey, buy my program. You're going to know how to brand yourself. You know, you're going to know how to use social media marketing. You know, uh, by those tools, you know, I can automate this and this. And, you know, I, I bought a lot of junks and a lot of stuff that I never implemented or didn't work. But, you know, uh, I'll tell you, Derek, if, if, I, if I knew what I know today, you know, four years ago, my goodness, my business would be up the roof right now, you know. Yeah. So I wish I, wish I had a mentor, you know, uh, a twin, you know, a twin brothers, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. it's okay, Jean-Michel. You know, I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to know to be successful quickly. So, you know, uh, I struggle like everybody else. You know, again, I wish I had, I had mentors and great coaches that would have really uh, uh, helped me save tons of time, ton, tons of learning time, you know. Yeah. yeah. More successful. And, uh, and you know, that, that's what I enjoy doing now. I'm sharing that, that very valuable experience with my clients now to help them get to where they want to go faster, you know, yeah. and that's really key. But and that's it. So it's like anything in life. It, it's a learning yeah. curve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. So, uh, how long did it take you before you, you believed that you actually w were making some real progress with LinkedIn? You mentioned if you knew now what you knew four years ago, um, yet you got started with LinkedIn probably, 10 years ago or thereabouts uh, or just over that. So how long did it take you before you actually started to see some results with your efforts on LinkedIn? Uh, you know, I'd say I probably struggled for about a year and a half, you know, mm -hmm. in the beginning, in the beginning of my business, you know, as I was, I was, uh, I was fully embracing that, that consulting lifestyle, you know? Yeah. Um, and, but you know, once, once I understood, when I understood how to do it, you know, which, uh, which I call, uh, breaking the ice, you know, so I mm -hmm. basically, uh, uh, I basically package the strategy and the technology together into a program that, that I share with my clients. And you can understand what it's about because, you know, I've discovered, I've discovered, uh, a couple of things that really make a difference on LinkedIn, you know, is that number one, you and I both know there is no such thing as B2B. Okay. Yeah. So, it's not a business talking to a business. Hello, business. Hey, how are you doing? Business B. No, you know, it's, it's people to people. You know? Exactly. So exactly. once you understand, you know, once you understand that, uh, so, so, you know, what I discovered is that number one, uh, you have obviously to, to identify your special talent, your special service, you know, what is your value proposition, you know, number one. Uh, number two, you have to brand yourself for that value proposition. But more importantly, you have to brand your authentic self. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to be authentic in your communication, in your presentation. 
and uh, you know, writing in the first person, a lot of white space, because you and I both know you have six seconds to impress. I don't care if it's a website or a web page or a LinkedIn profile, right? Yes. That's how much time you have to impress someone, yep. to let them, to have them stop in their tracks and, and, and pay attention and dig down deeper. So uh, by, by writing in the first person, by sharing your passion, this allows you to make that emotional connection with a reader, okay? Mm -hmm. Number two, then you discover that, you know, uh, LinkedIn is an amazing engine to target the right professional for your business, you know? So whether you're looking for clients, whether you're looking for partners, investors, you know, LinkedIn is a high quality network professional. It's growing fast, mm. you know, it took a while, but you know, the, the beauty of it is 85% of working Americans are on LinkedIn. Yes. So very highly represented on, in the USA, you know, yeah. which, at, which attracts a lot of uh, foreigners too, because of course we are, we are the richest, one of the richest country in the world, right? So there is a lot of business to be had here in this country. It's interesting you mentioned those statistics because uh, literally just over a week ago, Australia, which has a population of around 25 million, uh, we just crossed over 10 million people on LinkedIn. Well, you know, so you're, so you're getting there. So you had 40%, yeah. Yeah. you know, it's, it's happening. You know, some countries are, are more represented than others. You know, England is highly represented. Canada is getting there, but you know, I was surprised too. You know, I'm, I'm starting to work with clients in Norway and, and Poland and other countries yeah. uh, world. And then when I, when I do, when I study the representation on LinkedIn, I find that 70 to 75% of them are on LinkedIn. Yeah. in the middle of nowhere, you know, and it's like, okay, you know, that's, so, you know, that's the beauty of the web. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Because years upon years ago, uh, when you had a, a business, it could have been a shop front of, of some kind and your, your basic target market in most cases was through an immediate geographical area. Whereas nowadays your, your target market can be worldwide. And that's one of the, one of the amazing opportunities that LinkedIn literally offers. And it, it uh, obviously it depends on your products or services that you provide. Um, but you can just have a huge, massive target audience to get your message out there. And when those inquiries come in, it's, it's quite a surprise, isn't it? You know, it's amazing and it's happened in my business too. Yeah. You know, so yeah, SEO is great, you know, Google SEO, et cetera, because, you know, it allows you to attract clients in your local clients, in your, yeah. in your city, you know, but the thing is exactly, you know, the web allows us to, to connect with clients from all over the world. And, you know, so I, I speak French, of course, I was, I'm French native, I was born in France. So, uh, you know, uh, if you speak more languages, you have access to more people. Yeah. And, you know, it's the same thing, you know, I have, I have a broken voice, geographical boundaries. So I have, I have clients all over the world. And, you know, as a consultant, just like you and I uh, are doing a Zoom chat right now from the comfort of our home, our office, home office. Yes. You know, exactly. it's amazing that you can do what you love from the comfort of your home and connect with people from all over the world. You yeah. Know? Uh, Some amazing people at like that. I mean, you know, I have clients in Canada, in the U.S., from the West Coast to the East Coast, people in France, in Germany, in, in England, people in your country, in Australia, many clients in Australia, the Philippines, you know, uh, it's just uh, amazing you can connect with those people you know, mm -hmm. uh, and work with them. So uh, tell me, when you uh, first got involved with your business all those years ago, before you were achieving some great results with LinkedIn, what were the biggest challenges of your business back then in comparison to now? Well, uh, you know, we talked about branding and, yeah. and, and having enough authority. So that's something you build over time. You know, you start, if you, if you treat your clients well and you come from a place of service always, you know, mm -hmm. it's the only way to be successful. Uh, clients are going to say some great things about you and they're going to recommend your service to others. So we all start that way, you know, yeah. from words to mouths, right? And your network spreads out a little bit, you know. <clears throat> then I was doing, uh, you know, I was, I was looking for clients directly on LinkedIn with the power of the sales navigator search engine, you know, which is yeah. actually more powerful than Facebook ad targeting, okay? And uh, so that's step two, right? You know, identify your niche markets, target the right people for your business, for your needs. Okay. Number three, 
and that's and that's that's where most of us fail in the beginning you know is uh building relationships yes more importantly, building long-term relationship with professional so you know mm -hmm. we are of course many marketers go after the top three percent you know the people that are ready to work with you today okay and so we connect with people and we spam them until 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 they come through right but what I have discovered too is that the majority of professionals are not ready to work with you today. Mm. So it's very important to, to make an effort to build a longer term relationship. I agree. I agree. What's your reaction when somebody pitches to you too early in the conversation or in the, in the interaction that you're having off. with them? You know, it's right. a turn off and, uh, and, uh, because, and, and some people pitch you in the connection message already. Yes. You know? Yeah. And it's a real turn off because it says, okay, you're a professional. I'm a professional. Don't, you're not making an effort to know about me and my business. Now, I'm always open to what I've discovered too, to be successful is, is always, you know, my approach, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one of my approaches that works very well. One of my tips is never approach a relationship from a, from a service provider to potential client level. Because when you do this, you put them at a disadvantage, right? It's mm -hmm. like, oh, look at this guy. He comes with his big shoes and his suitcase. He's going to try to sell me something, right? What do you do immediately? You put your walls up, yeah. right? And that's a human reaction, right? Because we are, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, social media is only a decade old, but, you know, uh, you know email marketing, has been around a long time and, and, and you know that where we get, we get spammed and bombarded, uh, solicited, you know, 300, 400 times a day, you know, by email, by advertising. And, yeah. and we sick and tired of it, right? Mm. It's like overload, right? Overload. Hey, you know, okay, stop. You know? <laughs> I can't keep up with you, you know? So, uh, what I do when I approach someone and it's, it's, it's a line that works every time, to make people comfortable, to, to feel comfortable to have a conversation with you, you know, I always present it from equal to equal. Yes. You say, oh, yeah, I see you do some great things in your business, etc. I'd love to explore, how we, you know, learn more about what you do, share what I do, explore how we can help each other or partner together. Yeah. If you, if you come from a place of service, let's find out how we can help each other. You know, the energy just changes. Just yeah. like that, bang, you know? It, it's all about building the relationship, isn't it? Exactly, it's building a, building a relationship. And I, and I will tell you, this is interesting, this, this just came to mind. Uh, about three years ago, I think, I, I had a conversation with, with a great coach on LinkedIn. And uh, he asked me, hey Jean-Michel, how do you use LinkedIn? So I was like, well, I use LinkedIn to find clients. And then he paused and he says, shake his hand and he says, you're doing it all wrong. And he says, what's this guy talking about? And he says, no, you need to look for strategic or referral partners on LinkedIn. That's how you're going to grow and explode your business. And at the time I was like, okay, this guy is crazy. I have no idea what he's talking about, right? It's like, what is he talking about? And you know, I can tell you now that in the past two years, I have, I have tripled my business by working with strategic partner, referral mm -hmm. partner, you know, and a lot of the time, if you look for complementary services, for example, you know, you and I offer, we're great at offering LinkedIn services, LinkedIn marketing. Yeah. But I have clients that come to me and they say, Jean-Michel, you know, uh, great. We got, we got the lead generation machine working great. Now I need a website, right? This is, yeah, you need a website if you want to show your authority online. Uh, I, I want to do email marketing. Great. So, uh, even so, I, I understand how to do all of this. You know, I want to specialize my business in doing a few things very well for my clients. It's more efficient for my business and I can work with more clients that way. So, someone needs a website. You know, I've done websites in the past. And I'd rather send them to someone like you, Derek. And it says, hey, you know, let me send you to someone that's really good at it. Yeah. So I sent them to you to do their website and their SEO. Mm -hmm. Or I have a great Facebook ad partner. And it says, you know, yeah, you want to leverage Facebook marketing, you know, 
let me recommend someone for you. So what happens when you do this? When you do this, it's almost a sure sell every time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm recommending someone that I trust. What's in it for? Nothing. Uh, nothing. Maybe a, a small referral fee or something. But what's happening yeah. now is that now if I have there if I have a referral partner, I'm doing a lead generation. He's doing his lead generation. So basically, we have double lead generation because mm -hmm. his clients can be my client and my client can be his client. So now I have three referral partners. Now I'm quadrupling my lead generation for my business. Yes. So, you know, at the time when I talked to this coach, I was like, okay, this guy's crazy. I don't understand what he's talking about. But now I have experienced that in my business and I, and I teach that to my clients as well. So, you know, don't just look for clients, but look for strategic partners. It's going to explore your business and it's going to make it so, it's going to make it so much enjoyable too. So do you mind if I ask you, how long have you been actually teaching that strategy to your clients? You know, uh, I've, been, I've been teaching it the past year. Yeah. And, and also, uh, and, and, uh, but it's, it's a diff you know, you have to switch gears. You have to switch your way of thinking, you know. And yeah. so, and, and so th that's what I teach my clients also is don't be afraid to engage someone. Because you may not know exactly right now what they do, but if you take... 30 minutes to really understand who they are. You'll be amazed of the opportunities that come through. Yes. The opportunities to work together and to help each other that come through. You know, and that's, exactly. and that's fun and exciting. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I, tell my, I tell my clients, you know, build a great list of referral partners. And that, that uh, whole strategy of helping somebody else without any expectation of anything in return. Uh, people are not used to that. And it's a, it's a very nice surprise to them. And uh, I mean, I, we have exactly the same strategy, as you know, and um, as, as one of the uh, strategies in the course. And one of the things that's interesting is when people turn around to me and they say, well, what do you get out of this? I just turn around and say, well, nothing. And sometimes they actually find that hard to believe, but then I, I stress to them, we, we don't expect anything out of it. And so then what happens is when we refer somebody to help them out, who can help them overcome their challenge or problem that we've previously asked them about. What literally happens is our um, referred partner will go and help them out. We'll stay in the loop. We'll give them a follow-up message just once every so often, just to see how things are working out for them, how things are doing. And so at the end of the whole process, they've overcome their challenge or problem in business. We've referred one of our, uh, preferred suppliers to them to help them overcome that challenge or problem and so we wind up with two people who are absolutely delighted with us and that's builds an amazing referral source almost immediately and certainly down the track we become top of mind very quickly and that's the amazing thing about that strategy it works extremely well it does take a little bit of time to set up but the rewards far outweigh the, the, the time that it takes to implement and to manage and to look after. It's, it's a fantastic strategy. It works extremely well. And, and you know, you build trust by doing this. You, know, yes. you build great partner, you build trust, and people remember that you, you were selfless. You remember that you were of service. You wanted to help them, and they will bring you more business. So, you know, you're building your network, and that's what LinkedIn is about. It's a networking engine. Yeah. So, and, uh, and so, uh, so, you know, we need to get out of this thinking, outmoded thinking that it's a, it's a resume repository. And most people I talk to when I start working with them, that's what they think. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't see the amazing, the, the amazing networking engine hiding behind them. And, and our LinkedIn gives you many opportunities to engage and stay top of mind, you know, uh, by notification of special events. You know, LinkedIn tells you who has a birthday, who has a work anniversary, who has a new job. You endorse someone's skills, LinkedIn notify them. Yeah. Hey, Derek endorsed five of your skills. What happens? Who is this guy? You know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know they're gonna look, so they're gonna, you're gonna bring many pair of eyes back to your profile. And if, and if there is affinity, you know, you're going to warm them up naturally, you know, and that's what it's about. Plus, you know, the majority of professionals on LinkedIn are not like you and I, you know, they don't get, they don't get a lot of activity on LinkedIn yet. 
So when they see your message come through, your endorsements, you know, you stand out every time, you get noticed every time. That's why I teach my clients. Just remember, not everybody, most people get very little activity on LinkedIn. So when they see your message come through, when they see your endorsements uh, come through, you, you are top of mind, you get noticed. And they are grateful. I'll tell yeah. you last year, <laughs> I'll tell you, Derek, and maybe you've had the same experience. Last year, I closed one third of my clients by responding to, thank you for the birthday wishes, Jean-Michel. And I got one third of my clients by responding to, thank you for the endorsement, Jean-Michel. Mm -hmm. And you're welcome, and you're on a conversation, you look at their profile, you, uh, you praise them on something they're doing well, you find something you have in common, you know, and then before you know it, you know, then you are in a conversation with them. You know, it does give you a lot of tools to get the conversation started. Exactly, a lot more than Facebook, you know. I mean, Facebook yeah. will tell you who has a birthday, and that's about it right now, you know. Yeah. The thing um, I like a lot about LinkedIn, and this is one of the things that I mentioned to my clients, is I describe it as the world's largest database of businesses, literally at your fingertips. And it's got a social media network connected to it as well. It is. It is amazing. Um, yeah. It is amazing. Um, so you imagine if the world's largest database of businesses and Facebook combined. That's and, and most importantly, yeah, it's a very high quality network. So yeah, Facebook is Facebook is used by all different all different age groups and, and a lot to, to keep track with your family, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening with your family, etc. So so it may look like it may look like it, it has a lot more people on it, but actually the quality is not there, you know. Yeah. Uh, LinkedIn is a lot more a lot more professional with, with much better quality. It's it's a lot more business orientated. Right, right. But the real, you know, the, the, the third point of, of ice, you know, which is uh, breaking the ice, you know, impress, engage, connect and engage, you know, uh, which is difficult to learn or teach, is the follow up and the follow through with your leads. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we, we talked about the fact that, yeah, many people are not ready to work with you today. So you need to stay top of mind, keep in touch over a longer period of time. But when you do this, you know, those connections, those connections you're making, those relationships you're building, they will, they will bring fruits into your business, into your career down the line. Guaranteed. Yeah. I see it happen all the time. You know? So it's well worth the effort, even, see, even if you're not going to see immediate results, you know, this week, this month. You know? mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and that's one of the things I try to teach my, my clients is how to follow up, how to follow through. And, and I'm sure you have a lot of training uh, mm -hmm. in your course as well on that. Well, one of the, one of the uh, chapters in the course is all about conversation starters and the messages. And we actually give you the messages that we recommend that you use. Let me ask you, with, with the happy birthday messages, what, what happy birthday message um, do you like sending out the most to your connections on LinkedIn? Oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the birthday message is going to be basically uh, very friendly, wishing them the best, congratulating them, hoping they had a blast on the special day. Yeah. And you know what I do too, what I've discovered uh, with, with the capability now to add an image. Yeah. I recommend if you can add an image or, or animated GIF, yeah. To message, I can tell you, I've been doing this the last, last two months and my response rate has like tripled from the birthday messages and the, and the work anniversary messages just because I attached an image, something fun. You yeah. know? Well, the, the happy so, birthday messages are really starting to evolve um, because now you can actually put a recorded message in there as well. Um, so when you think about the potential for that, with an with a attached GIF image, you've, you've got quite a message that can go out. One of the things that uh, I found a couple of years ago that worked extremely well for me, uh, I, was, I was wondering about these happy birthday messages uh, because LinkedIn gives you this, this happy birthday message prompt, if you will. And I think it's, it's literally just happy birthday or Derek says happy birthday or, or something like that. It's, it's very short. It's very it's literally only two about two or three words and I was I was wondering about this and I was thinking what's the best happy birthday message to go because let's face it 
face it, a lot of us, we've got a whole lot of connections on LinkedIn and we know some of them much better than we know many of the others. And so when you get one of these happy birthday messages from somebody who you don't know very well, um, you've got to be careful because it, it can have a, a, you can get a different reaction to it. And so I thought, what's the best happy birthday message that I can send to somebody that's going to overcome all of that? And so I thought, I know, the happy birthday song. So my, mes my message for happy birthdays is literally the happy birthday song. And people absolutely love it. I I've got pages upon pages of, of replies, comments that have come back to me, how delighted people are to receive the happy birthday song. So now I'm thinking, thanks to your advice just a, a minute ago, is maybe we should record the happy birthday song, although I have to work on my singing voice, and put a, an animated GIF with it as well. I mean, the, the, the opportunities there are just endless. Yeah, but it's, it's a fantastic conversation starter. And yeah, it, it does get that conversation started so that you can start to, to take it to another level. And that's what it is. That's how you start to build relationships on LinkedIn. And you know, basically, the way I look at those engagement opportunities, Derek, is basically gives you four opportunities a year to engage, to re-engage anyone in your network. Those, those dormant connections that were not ready to work with you today, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and so it's kind of setting up a reminder every couple of months, you know, hey, I need to follow up with this person. So it's a very natural, natural way to do it without, yeah. without spam, spamming them with a multi-email message campaign, okay? And, uh, and I tell you, it works. That's where the conversion comes from because... So that's those four opportunities, what, what are those four opportunities? Obviously, happy birthday is one. Happy birthday, uh, happy work anniversary. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your new position. Yep. And you're welcome for the endorsements. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that's where the gold comes from. And, and you know, uh, when I start working with clients, I see it all the time. You know, it's like, oh, okay. They don't follow up because you, you congratulated somebody or you send them a, a, a very nice uh, thank you for connecting message, a welcome message, which you must do mm -hmm. because, because less than half percent of people on LinkedIn will send you a thank you or welcome message after you connect. Isn't that so bizarre? It's you, crazy. You connect like with somebody and then they don't send you a welcome or a thank you for connecting message. But you know, and so they're I missing that opportunity to get the conversation started right from the beginning. It's, it's crazy. Exactly. And we don't like understand. We don't remember. Yeah, social media is only a decade old, Derek. So yeah. we don't understand how it works. We don't understand the dynamic, you know. But mostly you probably do because you, I mean, you are a psychotherapist, a an hypnotist, and, and you've got. <laughs> We are at NPL, a PNL, right? And then, uh, not quite anyway, a, not, not quite a, a psychotherapist, but anyway. But um, you've, done, you've done some, yeah. uh, some uh, human, human stuff, right? Human science stuff. So it makes yes. you more effective at, at, uh, at basically prospecting and messaging people. Yeah. But, you know, so people, people do okay. Uh, you know, a lot of them miss, miss on the brand. They don't brand themselves well on social media. Yeah. They do okay, uh, you know, they follow you on Twitter, they friend you on Facebook, they connect with you on LinkedIn, and then after that, they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, they wait, and they don't understand why the phone doesn't ring. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what most people do. They, okay, I'm connected with this guy, now what? They don't know what to do. So that's what you and I are trying to teach our clients, uh, you know, and, and, and teach people how to leverage that amazing engine, that, that, that lead generation engine, you know, you have to build a relationship. You have to follow up with people. How do you do that? By being yourself, you have to be authentic. You have to be genuine. You have to want to be of service. Otherwise, it's a little bit like dating. If you don't talk to anybody, nothing happens. <laughs> and, you know, and you'd be surprised, you know, I mean, and I'm sure that that has happened to you too. You know, perfect stranger that you meet on social media, they will share with me something so personal that they, you know they would not share with a spouse or with a friend, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or a family member. So, uh, so it's a very powerful engagement tool mm -hmm. uh, if you know what to do. Uh, but, you know, you have to be yourself. You know, just like you say, it's like having coffee with someone or, or you yeah. know, dating someone, right? 
it, it's a great conversation starter and that's what it is it's 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 a conversation starter it's a tool to establish build and nurture that relationship um as you mentioned earlier if, if you pitch too early then 99 percent of the time you're going to blow it um you might going to be like Oof. yeah exactly that's people's reaction to it is as soon as they get pitched too early um it, it just pushes them away um, I'm a firm, firm believer in permission-based marketing. So what that literally means is during that conversation process, during that building of the relationship, at some stage in there, you can actually ask for their permission to send them something about what it is that you actually do. And you can send them through a case study or something like that. And usually what happens when, when I do ask that question, people turn around and say, yeah, sure. And so I'll, I'll send a case study through to them and their very next reply is okay looks good where to from here and that's where to from here that's usually a skype call a zoom call a phone call or a face-to-face -face meeting excellent yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it works you know um uh, without any sales process involved without any sales presentation presentation or pitching or selling of any kind nothing high pressure or anything and it, it just becomes incredibly easy it is and you know it's the same and it's the same thing uh, you know uh, similar to what i use with uh, with uh, you know let's explore how we can help each other or partner together mm -hmm. you get them on the call the conversation is easy because there's not the pressure of the sale on both either side and you know in the end if we are a good fit, I hand, you know, I hand up selling them my services if they need them. So, you know, yeah. there's no pressure, uh, but, uh, but you take the time to know the person because that's, that's what people need. You know, pe people want to be noticed. They want to be loved. They want to know that you care. Exactly. You know, and this is why those notifications on LinkedIn are, are so popular. You know, the most two popular pages on LinkedIn is who's viewed my profile and the notification page because people want to know who is interested in me yes who's connecting with me who loves me today who cares right yeah we're all a little bit vain <laughs> yeah but that's, yeah but that's really what's happening you know people want to be noticed yeah so uh, so you build that relationship that way you know and so like we were saying because because actually less than half a percent of professional will send you a welcome or thank you message after you mm. connect if you do it if your client do it does it uh, they get noticed they stand out automatically because they're one of the few that are doing it so mm. that's why those techniques work so well for now too because very few people know how to do it right right yes so that's yeah that's why we don't have to work so hard at it now the more you know if if that message goes out too wide and everybody starts to understand and do it then we're gonna to have to work harder <laughs> it's, it's a great introductory tool uh, and it's a great tool for getting the conversation started and for building those relationships and uh, it, it makes doing a lot of business very simple very easy for the simple reason that if you compare it to what people used to do uh, with their their old style marketing and, and the the processes that they used to go through back then if you compare that to what you do now on LinkedIn uh, it just LinkedIn is just much much easier for much better results I find anyway you know I, I get all my clients from LinkedIn now you know I have, I have my website I do SEO in the Dallas area yeah. you know I have uh, I have some people that come from Facebook I have some people that come from Twitter but you know what I do I don't even bother I just send them a nice message on Twitter, on Facebook, and I uh, ask them to connect on LinkedIn. Once they connect on LinkedIn, they are in my LinkedIn funnels, you know, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. when I know what I do. And, and so I close all my clients through LinkedIn, you know. Uh, um, but, let, let me ask you what, would you, what would you say is your most satisfying experience with LinkedIn? Uh, you know, I think uh, it's a hard question to, to answer, uh, Derek, but, you know, I think, is the opportunity to connect with people all over the world, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and make connection with, with very interesting, very exciting people. Because what you, you know, what, what you come to realize, the more, the more people you talk to, you realize that we all have gone through ups and downs. We have struggled. We have, we, you know, we, we got back up and we keep fighting. 
you know, we have had success and failures, you know, we're humans. And you realize we all want the same thing. We're looking for happiness. We're looking for an opportunity to support the people we love. So, uh, you know, it allows them to make that, that, that amazing connection with the world, you know, with other people like us in other countries. So, and it allows us, you and I, it allows us to be of service to others. You know, mm -hmm. this is the greatest calling of all. Yeah. Being of service to others, you know, and, and making a difference in their life, in their career and their business. I mean, I tell you, I, I love my job <laughs> because I'm helping people, you know, and every day, you know, you know, you know, in my regular jobs, there were days where I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to go to work. You know? And, uh, but I tell you, you know, the, the past few years, I've never had a day like that because I get up and I, and I'm ready for the next challenge. I'm ready to, to help new people continue to help my clients. And, uh, you know, it keeps me going. I love it. You know, it becomes you know? easy to love your job when things become so easy. It does, and, and, and you're making a difference. You're helping people, yeah. you know. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding. It's its own reward, you know. Um, so, uh, so uh, yeah, it's amazing, you know. So for people just starting out on LinkedIn, do, do you have any suggestions that you would make to, to people just getting started? Uh, well, you know, uh, if you're getting started with LinkedIn, uh, the first thing I would say is you need to identify what do you want to do with LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. So you need to, you need to have very clear goals. Mm -hmm. You know, I have people that come to me and they are in career transition. They have been in the job they hate for a long time, you know, and they says, you know, I don't know, what am I supposed to do? You know? And so, you know, we have to, you know, so I, I teach them, I say, okay, let's, let's evaluate your talent. Let's, let's evaluate the things you enjoy doing. You know, actually, I can show you something here. Can I share my screen before a sure, second? Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Let me share the screen here. Just want to show you something here. It's a little graphic that I discovered a couple of years ago. You know, and uh, it's a very interesting graphic. It's very simple, but very powerful. You know, and it I use it <clears throat> and uh, it shows four main areas of our life, right? So you can see the top. So we, 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 you know, we tell, I tell my clients, okay, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you want to do. Let's inventory your life a little bit. Okay. What do you love? What do you love to do? You know, mm -hmm. what are you good at? What are the things you're good at? And now we figure out now, can you do what you love and get paid for it? Right. Because yes. we have to live society you know it's, so you could be a great painter you know very talented painter but you know unless you're one of the top few painters that have a lot of visibility it's gonna be hard to make a living painting okay and and most of the people i talk to you know sometimes i talk to professional in their 50s 60s 70s they've they made tons of money millions but they come to me and they are unsatisfied if something is missing in their life and a lot of the time that's that fourth quadrant on the right that's missing. Yeah. They've, they've been through, through the process, they've worked all their life, they've made money, but they are, they are lacking this sense of satisfaction. Uh, and, you know, Tony Robbins said it very well. You know, yes, he does. You know, and that's exactly that point is that, you know, you, you know, you need that fulfillment in your life. You don't have fulfillment in your life. It's not going to work. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be missing. That's a great so, graphic. I like that. Yeah, I'm happy, happy to share it with you. Yeah, I'm happy to share it with you. I did not design it, but it was done by a company in Canada. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, you know, uh, so if you're starting on LinkedIn, you know, uh, make sure you have a very clear vision of what you want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is your value proposition? Uh, you know, uh, the services you want to, to offer. And uh, once you have that clear vision, then we can go to work. Then after that, it's just you and I can do this like that, right? We brand, we brand them. We brand them on LinkedIn. Develop your LinkedIn profile, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, share your passion, your authentic self, right in the first person, okay? Yep. Uh, optimize your LinkedIn profile. So once you do that, you know, uh, your, your views and, and, your, and your, weekly, your, your weekly searches are gonna up the roof just mm -hmm. naturally. 
and also there's a little bit magic that happens. So, uh, so I hope you don't mind if I talk about magic. You know? No, no, not at all. <laughs> but you know what happens is when you when you brand your authentic self and you send it out in the universe on social media. Basically, the universe will reflect that energy back and you will attract the right people to your business. Mm -hmm. now, that's, I know that sounds a little outlandish. Not and, at all. You know, but we all have heard about the law of attraction, right? The law of black, the law of attraction. Most of us don't understand it. I was but about I to say, you, it was a little movie released a couple of years ago called The Secret. Exactly. Thank Interestingly you. enough, do you know the connection between The Secret and Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich? Uh, no, I'm not sure. Do you tell me, please? In Think and Grow Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill mentions in the preface of the book um, that there is a hidden secret in the book and it's hidden on no less than 100 pages or it's mentioned on no less than 100 pages. And I, like many people, um, had read that book many times. Um, and then what literally happened in my experience, I heard about The Secret and I bought a, a DVD and I literally watched the DVD and I thought to myself, what if just half of this was true? If just half of this was true, I would be absolutely insane not to study it, okay? And so I literally watched The Secret five times in the first two days that I had it. And at this time, I still had not figured out what that so-called hidden secret, um, so hidden meaning in Think and Grow Rich actually was. And it was during that time of watching The Secret that um, it suddenly dawned on me, I said, that's what the hidden meaning is in that book. And I'll give you a big clue. It's 25% of the title. <laughs> it's all about how you think. Yeah, and it, it, even though, if, if you don't mind me saying, you're a rocket scientist, um, it's, it's, it's actually not rocket science. It's all about how you think, and, and how you think is, is literally what you attract. And so when you're on your whole online presence, um, when you start working that the right way, and when everything is congruent, and when everything is consistent, and I mean with your, your branding, the way that you're actually doing things, it's amazing how easy things become. And one of the, the reasons for that, um, from a less spiritual uh, perspective, is that so many people out there are not yet doing it. They're not consistent with their online presence, their online message, their online branding. And so once you become really strong, really consistent with all of that, uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, when somebody goes to your websites, uh, your online profiles, be it LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or anywhere, if they see anything that creates any kind of doubt, negativity or skepticism, they haven't got time to sort it out themselves, nor the inclination. They just click their mouse and go next to the next website, to the next social media page or, or wherever that, that might be. And so if your branding um, is not consistent across all of those channels, if your message is not consistent, then that's where a lot of people fall down. So it's interesting that you, that you mention um, the law of attraction because it's, it's also very consistent branding that, that helps with that as well as the way you're actually doing things. Well, uh, it's very true, Derek. And, and, uh, and I'll tell you, you know, LinkedIn branding is the proof of the law of attraction because I see it in my new clients all the time. You know, mm -hmm. We're not even doing LinkedIn marketing yet, and they're already getting connected with great people that are making a difference in their business just from the yeah. branding, just by putting that energy out there in the universe. Yeah. You know, but it's scary. You know, we're not wired to think that way, and we're not wired to believe that way. And so it's very scary, you know, uh, for someone uh, to decide, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of corporate America and I'm going to freelance. I'm going to start my own consulting business. It takes a lot of courage. As you know, mm -hmm. you know, we all I did move but a long time ago. But, you know, it was not easy. It took a lot of courage. It takes a lot of trust. It takes a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. And I'm really using the word faith because faith is really what it means here. It means to, to know that if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're following your destiny, using your special talents to make a difference in the world, 
if you are doing that, you will be taken care of. You will receive abundance in your life. And yeah. then it takes a leap of faith because we are not control. We feel that like we're not control anymore, right? We 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 live in a very technological, very grounded world, physical world, and and you know uh, we have to be in control of everything. But the truth is, this is so much out of our control. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, it reminds me of of something that uh, that uh, uh, Michel Prince said. Uh, you know, when I moved to Dallas uh, last year, I started doing speaking engagements. And uh, and I had the chance to to meet Michel Prince, who, who, uh, who worked very closely with Zig Ziglar for many years. Yeah. And she put it this way. She put it this way. She she said, "Activate your seeds of greatness." Nice. You know, and, and it's really what it is. You know, I, I believe we've all been imbued, given special talent, special gift, and and. And, uh, you know, the purpose of our life is to make good use of those gifts to touch other lives, to make a difference in the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, back to the kiki guy, you know, that's that most important, uh, you know, right, right circle there that, that many people I talk to are missing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, activate your seeds of greatness. It almost sounds like uh, almost sounds like something that uh, that uh, you know uh, televangelist uh, Joel Austin would say, would say, right? Very much the same. Fantastic. But, uh, Thank you for that. Um, let me ask you: is there is there one piece of advice you would provide to people using LinkedIn? And if so, what would that be? Let's let's finish up with one piece of advice that you would suggest to people using LinkedIn. Well, we talk about branding, so important that uh, you know brand yourself well before you you target your your specific audience, your niche markets. Uh, please don't spam people. You know this is a high quality co high quality network. Those are professionals. Yeah. Don't spam them. Build a relationship with them. You know, explore. But don't pitch too early. Ask their permission to to send through something about what you do. Yeah, build that relationship. Exactly, and and you know, uh, actually talking about permission marketing, you you are a pro at that. I think you have you have a you have a, a training program online about it. Yeah, and I can tell you that uh, if uh, actually I, I I'm going to show you something very interesting. But if you take the time to build a relationship with the right people on LinkedIn first, and then you follow up with permission emails you have the best of two worlds yes you know your lead generation machine and you have your conversion machine i'm going to show you here very quickly a couple of things are we doing okay on time uh, Derek? yes yeah <clears throat> okay i want to show you uh what happens when you use permission marketing okay so this is an example some examples of of single email campaigns i sent to professional, I build a relationship with on LinkedIn first for about a three months period. Yep. Okay. And you know, we're not talking about, we're not talking about, you know, uh, you know. Uh, so you sent 30 emails and you got 86.7% of those opened. Out of, out of 30 uh, emails you sent, 26 of them were opened because you asked permission to send that email out to them first. And because I had built a, a first, build a relationship on LinkedIn first using the strategy we discussed. Fantastic. That's you know, those so, are extraordinary numbers. Exactly. So so we're not talk about we're, we're not talking about bulk email marketing here. When you are into B2B, you don't need bulk email marketing. Okay. Yeah. But you need you need accurate targeting. That's very important. You need good branding. You need accurate targeting. And you need to engage and build a relationship with those people first. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. do this, you know, I just uh, you've experienced that, you teach that, you know, permission marketing, right? Now I sent 30 emails. From that one email, I got three clients. I mean, look yeah. at that, you know, JD, Lisa, and Joe, they opened emails a number of times. Guess what? There's a week, the same week or the next week, they're giving me a call or sending me an email to to book my calendar, you know, and, and they so, engage. So you got people who are opening those emails 
31 times, is that right? Or 18 times? Yeah. Keep, so that's, that's that one person who's opened that email 18 times. Exactly, because you, you provide great value and information in the email as well, you know. Yep. Maybe you send them to a link to, to a video you did, a, a great article to read, a page of your website, whatever strategy you do. You know, I do usually, a lot of the time, I do those, I do those permission marketing campaigns, email mm -hmm. campaigns. Uh, in you know around the holiday season, you know when when the when business goes down, then I make sure I maintain the same level of business throughout the year by by doing small campaigns. I mean, you know, I sent thirty emails, I got four clients out of this one. Yeah. But now you know, look at uh, you know Olabi, Cynthia, Gary. They showed a lot of interest, but they didn't call me directly. I can wait a week. Yes. And then I'm going to send them a second email the week later, and maybe use uh, scarcity. Yeah, you know, uh, or different marketing technique, and I can get two or three more clients from that second email if I need them. You know, it's interesting Christmas. though by asking their permission, you can you can see that uh, the ones that you've got their permission and that you send these emails to, you've clearly got their intention, their their attention. They're clearly intrigued uh, or interested to know more about what it is that you you do and and how you can possibly help them. So those are quite extraordinary numbers. They'd be <clears throat> many an email marketer out there who'd be thinking, how the hell is he doing that? Um, because but, by, not by building a relationship on LinkedIn, that's how I'm that's doing it. it. Building that relationship, exactly. asking permission. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's not hard. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. So All exactly. right. That, that's, that's some great tips, some great advice there, Jean-Michel. I, I really appreciate your time on this uh, call today and this interview. I, I thoroughly appreciate it. And we've got some great insights there that you've obviously learned over your many years of experience with LinkedIn. So thank you very much for joining us today. I thoroughly appreciate your time. Uh, my pleasure, Derek. Uh, thank you so much for having me.